We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. We're back on Liberty Nation Radio with Nazar, a Ukrainian soldier who's just visiting Washington, D.C. to discuss the ongoing war in Ukraine. Okay, let, let's talk about the, the overall situation there. So this, th- there's been conflict with Russia since, well, let's talk about Charge of the Light Brigade. Let's not go that far back for the, uh, the Crimean Wars. But since 2014, uh, it, it seems that Ukraine has had to almost be on a half wartime footing, ready f- and, and so ready to do battle because there, there have been troops back and forth fighting since, well, for almost 10 years now. Um, mm-hmm. So this hostile situation, do you think going forward when... The, not not looking directly at when is the end of the war going to come because because nobody knows this but do you think that once there is some kind of solution do you think that will be the end of hostilities or will it always be in like a pre- an ever present mm-hmm. danger yeah that's oh yeah that's a really interesting question so it's bothering me as well and um i could say it's more like philosophical question or maybe um ethical, also historical, Mm. Uh, but um, we got a lot of parallels, for example, with uh, Second uh, World War, World World War II. Uh, So Russians now, they pretty much similar to Nazis in World War II. And uh, as you remember, like Nazis had this um, resentment uh, after First uh, World War and um, like they had this feeling of honor of they wanted you know to prove to other nations and to europe that they are worse something they are more than they are yes so uh, better than others that's pretty pretty similar to what russian pro- propaganda is now and um i think we could probably use uh, the world war ii model in this situation, so how it was uh, after uh, after defeating uh, Nazis, it was a long process, maybe like ten years or even more, of building uh, this, you know, regret uh, yeah. and uh, of understanding uh, that what they were doing was wrong. So hopefully, hopefully, I see this as one of the scenarios we could, you know, we could make them feel sorry and it's it's mostly uh, speaking about not just you know regular russians but more like russian intellectual elites who who really understand like this problem but can't speak right now so if if putin's regime will fall if like autocracy will fall down then we have this small chance to build like new relations uh between russians and ukrainians and the whole world so when it's g- not gonna be imperial because we always had this imperial imperialistic relations between ukraine and russia russia always wanted to you know to guide ukraine to yeah to to have ukraine as their own property kind of and so that's one scenario i see and uh, the second scenario is kind of Israeli scenario, when we like you know couldn't be friends anyway, so we just build you know big wall between Ukraine and Russia, mm. and just you know be all the time like we kind of in a war state, and it's also it's also not so bad because Ukrainians um, they have a lot of experience right now. And we could keep it, but we just need consolidation and we just need solidarity from other Western countries. Yeah, I, I think that point you make about building a a wall, let's not get too Donald Trump on this one, but th- there's also <laughs> a, uh, a like a geopolitical wall that is being proposed. Definitely. And that's with the the ascension to, to NATO. So you'll have, if that comes through, I mean, do you think that will come through? Um, you mean 
if Ukraine will, gonna will, be in will, NATO, you, yeah? yeah, will Ukraine become a, a full member of NATO? W will that essentially act as the wall? Uh, yeah, kind of. But also, you should understand that NATO, for Russia, NATO is also like um, an enemy. So yeah. it's like number one enemy for, for Russians. And it's it's going to make Ukraine maybe more... Uh, no, yeah, more resistant to some kind of informational uh, attacks because they, they're pretty strong in propaganda and they just try not to uh, not to give us this possibility to be independent because they want to influence us. And if Ukraine, for example, gonna be uh, in NATO, yes, that's like we just already made this decision, so they're not gonna uh they're not gonna use it as a weakness point of ukraine because now we're weak because we're kind of alone so we have like this coalition around us but we are not a member of eu we are not a member of uh, nato we are not a member of you know this more like transnational uh, big structure so we are on our own here and they use it mostly in for as you know informational yeah. um way to attack us but uh, speaking about uh, just lands or maybe army i'm not gonna i'm not gonna think that it's really it's really changed something with okay. russia they, they don't they don't care to be honest well let, let's let's talk about the lands here so there's the the donbass region which is i forgive me if i get this wrong that's uh donetsk and luhansk luhansk yes. now those are that region's uh, under Russian control at the moment, mostly. Do, do, yes. you, do you think that if there is any kind of negotiations for uh, a cessation of war, not necessarily peaceful or friendly relations, but a cessation of mm -hmm. war, do you think that the Donbass region will be under Russian control at the end of those negotiations? Mm. Yes, I think so. So first, we need to understand like the global idea of Russia and the global idea of Putin. They see Ukraine as as kind of maternal land because yes. speaking about their history, they associate themselves very much with Kiev and Rus, uh, which is actually Ukrainian territory. So uh, it's kind of justify their existence. And um, they started this conflict, they started this war, and they they will not give us back all these territories without, uh, you know, without actually regretting of what, what they did or without mm -hmm. uh, defeating themselves. So it's not going to happen like this. I, I'm pretty sure and that's why we so, you know... Mm, afraid of 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 the westerns being ignorant about uh, ukrainian uh, war that's because we understand that russians not gonna stop so right. they they want they want to offend ukraine and uh, it's just it's just a matter of their philosophy of life philosophy of existence they, they're not gonna stop and it's not about even territories it's more about the idea Yes. of being the main influencers in Eastern Europe, the, the main, you know, imperial there. So. Yeah, I, I think uh, Vladimir Putin's made that very clear, that it, it's, it's about influence rather than actual acreage or land. Uh, I, yeah, he's, he's made that very clear thing. So what do you think Ukraine, how do you think Ukraine can best get out of this? This is, it's going to require an international coming together right is that definitely yes so yes as i said before russia is a big country huge country with with good wartime economy and they produce a lot of ammunition they produce a lot of drones and uh, they also have their own like access of evil coalition so mm. we know that north korea iran supporting them them and you see like this last Iranian Ira Iranian attack on Israel. They use like the same technologies they already tested uh, in Ukraine. 
So um, Russia is way more powerful than, than Ukraine uh, on its own. And um, if if we're gonna be separated, you know, if it's gonna be like Ukraine, Poland, Baltic countries, US, uh, they you know divide and conquer. Mm. Yes, they, they just they, they use basically this in their informational and propaganda uh, operations. So they try and you know to create division to divide even Americans. Uh, to divide Europeans, to make them, you know, have, um, yes, to escalate like these conflicts between them. So I yep. would say that we can't stand by our own. That's, we need, that's why we need uh, international help. Okay. And, and there's that, uh, what's, what's the final thing that you'd like to say? Give us your, your overall assessment, what's needed. Where do you see things going next? Yes. So I could say that what we need right now, and from my perspective, why I'm here, like we need to understand that it's not, um, you know, about Ukraine and Russia. It is about like the whole world against access of evil. So they like America is already in this war. Mm, that's I know that a lot of American politics are heavily influenced but by, by Russian propaganda. Uh, they try to influence uh, your elections and they always do. They try to create divisions. And even though it's not so mentionable, it's it's going right now. It's going right now. So um what I also want to say, it's not about Democrats and Republicans. It's it's about common sense. And what we're trying to do right now, we, we're trying to build a network uh, with Republicans who, who are supportive or maybe skeptical to Ukraine and have like honest conversations with them. And we're trying to convince them that it's not about, you know, uh, just giving us uh, bags with cash something like that we we need uh, just ability to defend ourselves and to defeat russia so we are also like you know promoting returnal investments or investment returnals um we want you to work to with your economy we don't want your money we just want your support your verbal support and your military support as, as that's it i could say uh, thanks ever so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. And yeah, that, that's a big honor to be on Liberty Nation because Ukrainians are also very, very big lovers of liberty and freedom. And that's a big honor for us. Liberty always. Coming up after this short break, we're talking with Andrew Moran on the economics of war. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.